Ari Shalom, Kahalayam La Yahweh Bashim El Shabba Hashem Rakakodash, that bond us to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who really teach well. Must peace, love, and salutation to the brothers in this work of truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the young brother Batat back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, it'd be edifying. Um, as you can see before you, I have a channel pulled up, GMS Word of Life. And this brother always putting up, you know, via, uh, videos of chariots, so-called UFOs of the Bible, which I wanted to do a lesson concerning, you know, the topic that has been pushed around among the brotherhood. And I just want to, you know, draw attention to, you know, something that most people already know, but, you know, focus solely on this because, you know, the chariots... <sighs> Like you. The chariots always has been and will continue to be a big part of this doctrine, the big part of the ministry. It all it has always been that way and it will continue to be that way. You know, ever since the very beginning, the chariots have been a big part of everything that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah does. You know? Like, you know, for example, you know, brothers already know how the Lord led us out of the land of Egypt by way of the chariots, you know. It's been many, it's been many examples throughout the scriptures how the chariots played a big, big factor in what the Lord was doing for Israel and what the Lord was just doing, period, man. <sighs> To try to discredit the the uh, doctrine of the chariots, which they play a very key part in our salvation. They did once before when we was coming out of the old Egypt, and they do most importantly in this time today. Because the Lord is going to save, that means he's going to deliver, that means he's going to capture, he's going to fetch. And get his elect from the four corners in the earth while in the midst of nuclear destruction pending, man. How in the Lord, you think the Lord, you know, just it makes no sense. So the Lord is going to ride a horse and carriage throughout the four corners of the earth and deliver his elect one by one. Get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Get the fuck out of here with that, man. It makes no damn sense. If the Lord was riding on a horse in a damn carriage, it would take him forever to deliver every single man of the elect, 144,000, while a nuclear war is going on, man. That makes no fucking sense. It doesn't make any type of damn sense, man. You know, to you to try to sit up here and discredit the, the chariots of Israel, the UFOs, the so-called UFOs. But we know them as the chariots of Israel. <sighs> so, I'm going to get a couple precepts. You know, Lord willing, this lesson be edifying, you know. And I'm sure brothers don't already went over these same precepts. But I just wanted to bring out these few points, you know, that the Lord gave me, you know, through the Spirit in my mind or like, the Lord, very the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shah needs a very fast vehicle in order to deliver his elect while there is pending doom upon the fucking earth. We're talking about nuclear destruction. We're talking about missiles hitting the earth simultaneously at the same time. The elect are gonna have to be off the earth when this is happening. So how in the world is the Lord going to be able to do that? We're talking about Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, the God that created the earth. You know, how is he going to be able to do that? Is he going to send his angels on ho horse, actual horses and carriages to send them throughout the whole earth to get the elect? So the brothers is going to you know, be flying <laughs> in the back on the back of a carriage in the sky. It makes no sense. 
It makes no sense. It makes no sense. The chariots of Israel are vehicles that are going to be very much needed for the salvation of Israel. It's something that's going to be safe. They're very efficient. They're supremely efficient. And there's something that's not. That's like they're fast. They defy the laws of physics. They're indestructible. A horse and carriage, I don't see that being that way. That could easily be destroyed. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted them and made no account of his labors. When they see it, so right now you have the righteous, you know, the men of the Lord are standing in great boldness before the face of Esau. Which we are, we are living in the last days of the last days. America is on the brink of going to war with Russia, man. You know. It says, uh, verse 2, it says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. So when they see horses. And carriages running in the air, they're going to be scared, troubled with terrible fear? No. That's something that's natural. You know what I mean? You don't see horses flying every day. You know, I'm just saying hypothetically. You know, if they was to see horses flying. But that's that to see horses, it's, it wouldn't trouble you. You know? Just saying hypothetically. It says, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So it, they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of the salvation that the Lord is going to do for the elect men. They're going to be delivered by so-called UFOs. Now, there was a video that came out a short time ago of a chariot that was possibly, that was way bigger than the size of the earth. You know? So with that vehicle... Yahweh Barashim Shah can deliver all of the elect, man. All of the elect. Let's see, uh, real quick. A month. See. See, here's an example, you know, chariot. Let's see. Do I got a video? I thought I had a video of a uh, well, here's one. This is a video of the chariot of Yahweh by Shem Al Shah in the heavens, man. And it's thousands upon thousands of angels, man. You cannot discredit this. You cannot debunk it. You can't not. You cannot discredit the vehicles of Yahweh by Shem Al Shah. That are constantly patrolling the heavens, man. They are they play a very important part in our salvation, man. I thought I had another video in this album, but apparently I don't. I thought I saved that video. And you know, I'm putting this up raw, so you know, forgive me for um not having this video queued up. Now this is a um nah that's that was the most like here. Yeah, I didn't actually have this video queued up. So I'm putting it up raw, so forgive me for being um a little unorganized. But I'm gonna get to a point. Look at that. Look at all these chariots, man. Clusters of them, man. Clusters of chariots. And this was on NASA's live feed uh, on May 8th of this year. It's chariot after chariot, clusters of chariots after clusters of chariots, man. This man was losing his mind. Look at this.
He was losing his mind. Now, wouldn't you consider this type of behavior to be strange? What you, what you, wouldn't you call that amazement? I meant to say amazement. It's like, I don't know why I said strange. Well, it is strange, but this is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5, verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And that's what you see with this guy right here in this video. He was terrified but excited at the same time. It says, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So they're not looking for, you know, men to be uh, pulled up into UFOs. They're not looking for that. What, the, what Esau calls a tractor beam. They're not looking for that to happen. Because they don't understand that this is a, the, the UFOs are, are a very key element in our salvation. When you see those vehicles, you should be rejoicing. Because if the, if the Lord didn't use those, what the hell is he going to use to deliver us, man? A horse and carriage? I think the fuck not. It just don't make sense, man. Um, it says, so far beyond all that they looked for. So, like I said through, through the Spirit earlier, <sighs> bear with me. They're not looking for so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and many other uh, Israelites that are scattered abroad throughout the heathen, the Israelite foreigners. They're not looking for these men and women and children to be delivered up into what, what the world knows as UFOs. They're not looking for that. That would be considered strange. That would be considered amazing, but scary at the same time. They're not looking for that. The world, that is far beyond, that is far beyond the perception of the world. That's something that now they're not looking forward to. But they're going to they're gonna see, they're going to see it, the salvation of Israel, man. The scripture says that everybody's going to see that salvation of Israel. Because Yahweh Shah is going to come on a swift cloud. On the so-called UFO. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 4. It says, We fools account his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints? So these people are going to know in their spirits that this is of, of the Heavenly Father. This is of a God. You know? They're going to know it. And they're going to be thinking to themselves, like, is this the guy, you know, that we was talking shit about? Saying all these things, calling him crazy. Now, look, look at him. He's getting delivered up. Because it's going to be known that Yahweh Shai is returning, man. The world is going to know. The scripture says, people shall be welling. Revelations 1 and 7. So... That was one of the main precepts that I had concerning this topic. But I, I know it was another one in Baruch that I wanted to get. But just give me one second. Let me um, let me find it. Because the Lord scattered us among all heathen. And he said he was going to fetch us. Maybe if I type in the word fetch. The Lord said it multiple times. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 4. It says, if any, if any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of the heaven, from thence... Will Yahweh thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee? So 
this whole doctrine about going back to Africa. Wait, the scriptures cut that, man. The scripture says, the Lord said himself, if you go, if you get scattered, let's read it again. Deuteronomy 34. If any of thine, that means of all the children of Israel, that means all of the pedigree, all of the seed of Israel, you know, that are part of the elect. Let me add that in there. Salaki. Uh, it says, if any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence, that means from wherever you are, will Yahweh thy power gather thee. So wherever you at, the Lord is going to come get you. That's like your father telling you, look, son, I'm going to come get you from wherever you at. You at the park, I'm going to come get you. You in America, I'm coming to get you. You in Africa, I'm coming to get you. You know what I'm saying? You in the uttermost part to the earth, I'm coming to get you. You don't have to come to the land of Israel. You don't want to go over there anyways. Or back to Africa. We're not Africans, man. We're not Hamites. We are, we are, we are um, descendants of Shem. Or Shem. We're descendants of Shem. We're not descendants of Ham or Japhet. We're descendants of Shem. So, the Lord is basically telling you, telling us that he's going to come get us. No matter where the hell we at, he's coming to get us. And he knows exactly where all of his elect is at. Because the Lord cares about his elect. And the bulk, the bulk of them are in America and the UK and in many other places all throughout the world. Okay, um, Deuteronomy 30 and 4 it says, If any of nine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of the heaven, from thence will the Lord, will Yahweh thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Okay, uh, 